Hello everyone and welcome back to The Favorite Comics. This is the show where we look at my favorite comics. Not too much to it. It's pretty simple. I've been away for a couple weeks of not doing this show. I figured let's come back in a big way. And by big way, let's talk about probably... I always say it's one of my favorite comics. That's the name of the show. But this comic book, I think, is something that moved me in a way that not a lot of other books have. Even on this list. This book had this special place in my heart and in my life as being one of the first books that made me go, oh, you don't have to be dark to be serious. That, I mean, there's a lot of stories I can tell that in better ways, maybe, if like even in books or literature or anything. But this is the first comic book that made me go, you can actually have a compelling and gripping story of a serious nature and you don't have to make this dark, brooding, intensity piece. And that, of course, is the six-issue run from legendary creator Darwin Cook called DC The New Frontier. So, for some of you younger people who may not know what the DC New Frontier is, let me break it down for you in just a little bit here. Imagine a beautiful world on the edge of the space revolution. We're going into space. We're we're coming out of wars. We're we're just in this beautiful era, this JFK era of America. Everything is looking prosperous and futuristic. We are in this golden age of retro and futuristic science fiction, and these characters are coming into their prominence in this world. Imagine the heroes of yesteryear have been forced to retire by the government, and now suddenly these new threats are lingering to our world and the heroes of today have to find themselves in this new space to make themselves known to the world. It's absolutely 100% one of the smartest and most brilliantly crafted books DC has ever put out. It is so poignant and perfect and just harkens back to an era of storytelling I have been a fan of for years. You know, something about that space race age you know where it's just like that retro science fiction and i think a lot of people kind of like that in a certain way but it doesn't really have like that same impact like as some more like maybe 80s or 90s when it comes to like storytelling but that era is such a fun place to look to and have some really interesting stories to be told there i really enjoy when we go back to that era and having the dc universe come up in that bright colorful era just really makes me go that's really cool I really love the feel of it, I love the characterization, I love the storytelling, I love the way the whole thing comes together in this brilliant piece. This is a love letter to the DC Universe, and I think that's something that I love to see in my comic books. You know, it's something I talked about too when we talked about Kingdom Come. It's the story that's like, here's everything you've seen in the DC Universe prior to it. It's taking everything you love, here's your Superman, here's your Batman, here's your Wonder Woman. They're in the story, but they are not the focus of this story. They have an important role in this universe, but they are not the focal points of this universe. This is straight up telling you, who's our key player? Oh, it's Hal Jordan. Because of course it would be in this era of the 60s where war is kind of like this prominent feature in people's minds and the presidency is looking for a brighter tomorrow. Of course, one of the lead characters in a book from this era would have to be a test pilot guy from the military. That just makes sense. That is just perfectly cast for a story like this and a beautiful way to bring in, bring in Hal Jordan to a bigger universe. Like It makes me go, that's really fun. That is such a cool and interesting, unique story just to bring him in here, have something different happen with Hal. And I really like that element a lot. Another big character, too, is Martian Manhunter, who is an underrated character, in my opinion, who doesn't get the play that he deserves in a lot of bigger stories. That's something to look forward to when you're reading this, is just like seeing these different eras of the DC universe come together in such a brilliantly masterful way. I mean, there's really nothing like it in the world. You just, like, read this book... And you're just instantly transported to that era in that feeling. Every character looks the part. Every character acts the part. Every characterization of the people we know feels accurate, but also very of the time it's taking place, which is something I'm a huge fan of. And a lot of that I do believe has to come from Darwin Cook. And sadly, Dar Darwin Cook is no longer with us. And he's just a talent that I really wish we got to see more things from him just because every book he's worked on I think is a special place in the hearts of the reader that's just like so understanding of the world he is playing in but also just happens to be different enough where you're like there's really nothing else like this and you can look at any of his works and just be like there's nothing like what this is compared to anything I think that's in terms of his writing which the writing in this book and in all of Darwin's works actually is very here's the story 
you know, we, we know what's happening. We're getting our dialogue moments. We're getting our exposition. But it's presented in a fun way, which we'll get to in a second here. But it's also very fun and bubbly. Like, everybody's, like, making jokes of the time period. Everybody's talking like the time period. Like, you're not upset with any character acting out of character. Everyone's just doing what they would be doing in that time period. And the jokes are really funny in it. And I think that works really well. But you have to commemorate this guy's art style. There's just something so beautiful and prestigious about the way he draws all of these characters. Every single piece of art in this book is absolutely breathtaking. It just changes your perception of these characters in such a unique and powerful way that you just don't know what's coming next. And there's something about that I think is very true to the DC universe and a DC story in particular, where you just get a sense of everything and everything that encompasses that universe and brought into one place. And like I said too, this is very much that space age retro science fiction era of storytelling, which I really love. Like, because some of the prominent features in this book, and I won't get into every character who is featured in this book, just because it's one I think you're going to be like, oh, of course, they'd be in there, they'd be in there. But there's some more obscure characters, for lack of a better term, who are kind of popular in the 60s when, these, when this takes place coming into their prominence and doing something pretty cool here. One of them in particular, the Challengers of the Unknown, a group of characters I've always been fascinated by, and I, I just wanted to see them brought to the screen or a bigger presence in DC in some way, and having them have their moments here are really cool. I brought up Hal Jordan, I brought up Martian Manhunter, but you get a lot of like the more government-based characters taking big swings in here, like Rick Flagg has some moments in there. That's pretty cool to see. Everybody has their cool moments in here. I I'm really enjoying that aspect of this book, and it's such a fun and beautiful narrative that shows both the impact of superheroes on the world at large and the importance of having them come back into prominence, which is something I think is very underrated when we get stories like this. It's like when we banish superheroes, normally those are very dark stories. You know, look at things like Watchmen or Civil War for the example of like, we're doing the superhumans can't be in the spotlight and that kind of stuff. But when you're doing it in New Frontier, it's not hating on heroes. It's not like, oh, we're going to kill them or do these bad, dark things because we can't be heroes anymore. We're finding new ways to present ourselves to show that we can be heroic without having to resort to our heroics, which is something I think is really cool. And when we do see the prominence of the heroes return, it sparks a whole new era, a bright future that's coming back into play. And that is something that is very powerful and very unique to DC, which I thoroughly enjoy. And one of the things, too, I just have to bring up is just how good of an artist Darwin Cook is when it comes to drawing Wonder Woman. His Wonder Woman, absolutely perfect, a beautiful representation of that character. Everything about her looks spotless, flawless, genuinely unique and interesting. Absolutely breathtaking to see his Wonder Woman. I just think it's so enjoyable. This is straight up that perfect era of storytelling. It's going to have the tropes of the era, you know, like your, your cute girl Friday who's just talking really witty and having fun with you. You're going to see the importance of superheroes and heroics in an era that doesn't really want to have superheroes or heroics presenting themselves. You're going to see retro science fiction characters and ideas presented to you. Big alien concepts, big robot concepts, like this really interesting pushing forward, pushing boundaries storytelling for the time period. And you're going to see exactly why it's the new frontier. This is a beautiful modern age of comics and storytelling that's just showing us something beautiful that we don't get a lot of. It has so much reverence for the heroes, so much power and passion behind them that I just love seeing something that is so positive and lighthearted and influential that doesn't take itself in this dramatic and intense route. Of course, it's got its intense moments. It's got its heart and its beat and its emotional stakes. But it's not dark and brooding, which is something I always look forward to in my comic books. Because comic books are not from a place of dark and brooding, they are from a place of lighthearted energy presenting itself to the world in a bigger and better way. And that's something I want to see more of, so I like that we're seeing more of that here in New Frontier. It is such a genuinely interesting and engaging book one that I think a lot of people should check out. It is not too hard to get volumes of this book. It's all collected in different assorted volumes and trade paperbacks and everything. You can find it fairly easy. It is six issues long. It is from 2004. And I'm telling you now, there is nothing like a genuine Darwin Cook book to make you go, 
this is exactly what DC should represent and exactly what DC Comics should be. This is the agenda we should be pushing, showing the colorful nature of these characters in a, vi in a, in a bright and vibrant way that is just telling something so unique and fun and powerful that makes us go, this is the era of storytelling we should focus on. It's a beautiful world with beautiful characters. This is everything DC encompasses, and I think it's one of the best books DC has ever made, and that is why it is one of my favorite comics. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode of The Favorite Comics. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And if you're listening to this on the podcast feed, please give us a rating there because that is very important for stuff like this. So if you guys want to check me out in other places, you can check me out on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, all that good stuff. And I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck. Look for a brighter tomorrow, friends. There will always be one waiting for us.